The tricky thing with true identity proofs is they're just endless. Endless. And there is no set of steps that you can say, oh, you know, you do step one, two, three, four, and five, and then you get the answer at the bottom. You'll get it. I actually, at school, I got given this sheet. It has uh, about 300 trig identity proofs on it. They all look completely different. Doing one does not help you do the next one. And it's like, how am I supposed to wrap my head around this? You need to recognize these things. And then notice they happen, happen in different ways every single time. So don't expect, oh, I've seen this question before. You have to have some overall principles that will work for you, no matter what question you look at. Okay. So let's start with this one. The strategy that you can use, no matter which question you look at. Here's the first thing that I will suggest, and you may have seen this already. Wherever you can, reduce the identity you've got to signs, oops, that should be an S, to signs and cosines. We're really good with dealing with signs and cosines. Sometimes you look at a question and you're like, this is just a mess because there's a cot, a cosec, a sec, a t all kinds of messy things. If you can take those and bring them down to, come on, actually, while you're coming in, can you get the yeah. latch and touch it off? Thanks. If you can bring down to signs and cosines, more often than not, things just sort of come out in the wash. Okay. Now, I will point out, this will sometimes make things really long, right? Because to write sine theta over cos theta takes more time and more space than to write tan theta. And the same with every other identity that you use. So when you bring it down to the basic functions, something that starts like this size will quickly balloon out, okay? But the point is, once it's bigger, you can move around the pieces, you can like cancel, oh, there's a sign and there's a sign. So this is a very helpful strategy overall, okay? Secondly, you need to recognize the identities that I showed you yesterday. And this comes somewhat from memory, really. So the more you use these, I mean, I told a bit of a lie. You know, sometimes one question looks completely different than another. Hey, sir. Hey, hi. Yeah, good. Sorry to interrupt. It's fine. At least another week or two on page 12. Really? It's a disaster. Zone. It's that. Seven, well, I heard there was like a, a proper hole. collecting water. So you may just... Um, are you going to be doing all the room for that? Yeah, that is, but you may just need to talk Kerry down. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay. All right. I don't know if anyone's up, been up near the um, dumb animals that are on the basketball courts. Some of them are, you know how, well, we were in the exam, right? You know, it was coming down. Um, not all of the dumb animals fared as well as ours did and just wow. kept the rain out. Some let it in. Anyway. Okay, now, I said, I said sometimes you do one identity and the next one looks totally different, right? So you're like, what, what use was that? Okay, well, the point is the more you use these, the more these will sort of form into your memory. Uh, I've talked about this before, right? Bless you. The reference sheet has a lot of the identities that you will need, okay? But if you are constantly looking at a question and then looking at the reference sheet and then looking back and forth, you will really struggle to recognize the pieces that you need because your brain's just in too many pieces, uh, places at the same time, okay? So recognize the known identities. Then, thirdly, don't simplify randomly. So, again, I mentioned this yesterday, but I want to re-emphasize it. Our brains are geared to simplify. You see thirds, you start rationalizing. You see, uh, you know, things in brackets, you start expanding, or whatever equivalent, okay? But when you're trying to prove something, you're trying to go somewhere specific, not just the simplest form, but a particular kind of form, whatever they provide for you, okay? So, in other words, don't simplify randomly. Think about the goal. The way I always say this is, have one eye on the thing that you're manipulating and then have your other eye on, well, if I started with the left-hand side, I've got to get to the right. So look at the right-hand side, think, what pieces do I need? Is that thing one fraction or is it two? What am I sort of heading towards? Okay. 